Welcome uh, universe and welcome to the review of what happened in the Netherlands and in France over the weekend. Of course, we're talking only the top leagues. <laughs> yeah, I don't think would be going a little bit too far for this dad who is watching a lot of soccer. But to be honest, I did not watch as much in these two leagues as I usually would. But, you know, I saw probably the game that we, ha we, you know, where the most headlines were made. Let, let, let us put that. It's not necessarily the game we have to talk about the most, but the game where we have uh, the most headlines for sure. So, uh, which of course is the game where PSG clinched the title. We actually have to talk about two rounds in France. Rounds that uh, delivered quite the interesting results, to be honest. I mean, we had an eight goal game uh, with Nantes. We had Nantes uh, almost um, handing the title to PSG. Um, a few days earlier than they actually had. We had, of course, the typical up and down Lyon stuff. So quite some interesting things. Also some uh, duels on the top that could very well set the tone for the for the rest of the season. Um, in the Netherlands, we only won round, but we had a makeup game. And to me, uh, when, when, when we go in there, it is uh, definitely a relegation battle where I think the most changes are happening. Up, up, up top, the Dutch league looks more or less set in stone almost. However, to me, it's again, although I'm very fa uh, fair right now, uh, it's again, the talk should be honestly about Ajax because now it is confirmed. And, you know, I didn't mention it in my Premier League videos so far. I might, I might talk a little bit about it uh, uh, in the next one. Uh, it's confirmed that Eric Ten Hag is leaving Ajax and going to PSV in the last week's video, I kind of said, yeah, this could turn the tide a little bit. I actually think uh, it is kind of remarkable that this could really, uh, this season could be a real, could be a real turning point. Now we'll see how well Ajax is built. Because we had, uh, no, we have not only Eric Ten Hag leaving, we had already over the past four seasons, I mean, all the big stars more or less left, that uh, Tadej is still there. It's because he is old and, you know, uh, we know that Grafenberg is uh, leaving. There's a lot of turnover in the, in the squad. And uh, the last time Ajax was really, really good was in 1819. However, if you look at that Dutch league season, it was actually PSVs to lose for a lot of time. It, it, went, came, it, it came down to... Uh, that uh, topper game where uh, Ajax kind of won with a, a somewhat a shady penalty or was, was it a red card. You know, uh, it turned on little things and then they make it all the way to the Champions League semi semi final and then the team get fleeced. But uh, Ajax, because they made so, so, so much money, could rebuild and actually could uh, re inject that squad. And they had Mark Overmars there, who was overseeing the, all the stuff with uh, Edwin van der Saar. Overmars had to be let go uh, a few months ago because of inappropriate behavior to his uh, female em employees. So um, that takes away from uh, loads of, uh, you know, from the peer pyramid because he was generally seen as one of the bright minds behind this uh, young Ajax team. A rebel is coming now. Eric Ten Hag is gone and there is no obvious successor. Now, the good news for Ajax is that their main rivals this season, PSV, are in a similar turmoil with Roger Schmidt going out. So I think those two appointments will be huge ones. Uh, who, who will go there? Where is Feyenoord? And maybe that it fits that I'm, I'm very fair. Feyenoord has had the restart last season with Arden Slot come coming come, come in. And maybe, maybe this is not a chance for Feyenoord to clinch something. Yes, Ajax have way more money, a better built squad, and maybe they still have the system. But uh, if it's really true that uh, many players, like I know uh, Masravi, Ravenberg, and probably also um, Sebastian Allaire are all going to leave. And those are already mega players uh, that will uh, dig a deep hole in, in the squad, the goalkeeping position. Uh, is very much in need for, re for replacement. So I think there's a pretty good chance that will see either a very, very tight league next season or that Ajax are actually uh, in need for another rebuild. And it's very cyclical with Ajax. They always have peer periods where they have uh, continued dominance, but it never goes more than four, uh, maximum five years. And then it's usually PSV that turns. Or when in those transition seasons, there could be then a fan with like in 17 popping up and winning a title. Just uh, wanted to mention that, but those are my thoughts. I think we're kind of underestimating that and maybe the high rolling times for Ajax are a little bit on the down. We already saw it 
uh, as great as the Champions League group stage was, but we already saw it towards the end of the group stage. Uh, the performances start, start to sleep, and already if you saw in the league, it was not all rosy. But uh, as I said, the big uh, things in the league were definitely the uh, battles for relegation, where both Sparta Rotterdam and Willem Dwey had to play against Vitesse. Of course, Sparta Rotterdam had already the lead against Vitesse, they only needed to finish the game. It was a war to Sparta, so suddenly Sparta moved from last position into 18th. However, come the weekend, 20 beat Sparta. Uh, I'm not sure it's, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not because of tiredness. Whereas Willem Dwey get a win over Vitesse. So Vitesse losing more or less twice a week, although the, as I said, the, the make the makeup game was just a few minutes and it should have happened or, 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 or earlier. But with that, suddenly Sparta is on the bottom again and Zwolle, who is also in there, get also a win at Walmark. So it is a really, really, really tight uh, uh, race with three teams kind of on the bottom and it's almost a straight sh uh, shootout. As for the title conversation, Ajax get a win in Nijmegen, uh, whereas PSV uh, win in Cambuur, although being down uh, a, a goal after two minutes, uh, and Feyenoord over Utrecht basically solidifying their third sp uh, space. AZ uh, beating Herren Wien is kind of, you know, AZ, AZ is probably trying to establish themselves as, uh, again, the power, fourth power of uh, Twente is at the moment in this very position. Uh, as I said, up top, it's four points with four games to go under the two-point rule. One will say this is kind of safe. I think it's still very much pointing towards Ajax, especially that we have in two weeks, PSV have to face Feyenoord still. So I think that's the biggest one coming up. Although Ajax also don't have that easy games overall, although the next few will be a little bit on the easy side. But uh, let's focus just for a little bit on the bottom. And I usually don't talk too, too, too much about relegation, but this relegation battle is actually quite uh, enticing in many ways. I mean, if you look at it uh, from Sitter in 14th on, uh, everyone still has a chance to get relegated. However, it's the bottom three that are separated by a single point and two go down and one goes into a playoff. And you see it already, already in the chance at the moment, Zwolle, uh, the lowest rated team of those three, is the also favorite, but 70, 68, 60, 67 is basically uh, a toss up, a coin toss, uh, who is, will go down. And yes, there's a few others that might uh, get implicated there. So a really, really an, uh, interesting uh, battle on the bottom. That is for sure. Um, looking forward, Zwolle have to play Ajax. That might not work in their favor. Uh, but you know, the others also don't have uh, really good games. I mean, Sparta has have, have to play AZ and Willem Dwey have to go to PSV. So, give or take, it is not gonna get easier for, for them. And an upset is there. Willem Dwey already have beaten PSV, by the way. Um, which actually nicely covers all the big games for the team on top of the teams on bottom and we can move over to France. Uh, the midweek action, um, I think a big result was definitely Monaco's win over Nice because uh, this kind of, Monaco is, on, is at the moment on a real roll and I think they are uh, headed straight for the Champions League uh, unless something happens along, along the way but I really think that uh, Monaco at the moment look in such a great game from racking up the, up the wins that they will probably uh, finish in the top three spot, which will at least mean Champions League qualification, which doesn't mean much because remember they uh, lost in the Champions League qualification round uh, this year, but still uh, it's the goal where you definitely want to be. Uh, but it was for me, it was all about uh, will PSG clinch already a title in Angers? This would be if they would uh, uh, get more points than Marseille would uh, in the home game against Nord. And it would also be interesting because last season the title for Lille was clinched in Angers, although it was not and on, on the last round and not with uh, games to go, but still would have been a nice duplicity. Um, PSG did their job there. Uh, Mbappé and Sergio Ramos actually getting uh, the first two, two, two goals before the half. Uh, and then very little on Marquinhos also had one in, uh, of course, uh, Misus then also getting sent. Not a great performance, but job done. So you're only one point away, or you could act, act, actually win if Marseille win it. Um, if Marseille don't, don't win, and it looked actually good, good, good for a while, because not twice took to lead and two penalties uh, for Marseille 
kind of get the e kick whereas they both are converted by Payet but um, uh, not had a 2-1 lead and then only very on um, uh, Harit is getting the winner for Marseille probably overall deserved um, also in the top three race uh, Strasbourg doing, uh, you know, uh, putting trouble on Turin by winning 2-1. So also not a result, uh, it, uh, I suppose this is a result definitely going Monaco's way because I don't necessarily see Monaco tripping, uh, tripping over Strasbourg, but I very much could see that Ren with, uh, if they get enough wins, that they could hold off Monaco despite not uh, the head-to-head -head, uh, probably uh, being a little bit iffy. Uh, we also had that Brest beating Lyon 2-1 uh, and then uh, Lyon kind of, yeah, the typical up and down 5-2 more, 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 but I think we have to um, see that, more, that, uh, that Lyon, despite having a uh, pretty big squad, uh, pretty talented squad, not finishing the European spots next season. Uh, Monaco continued the role with a 4-1 win over Saint-Étienne. Um, I'll go to PSG last. Uh, Rennes 5-0 over Lorient, also kind of keeping the race uh, the race alive and Lille beating Strasbourg 1-0, which keeps the tiniest of chances for them open. Uh, same goes for Nice with the 1-0 over Troyes, Marseille solidifying their uh, positions up top uh, with a 1-0 over Reims. Uh, but the talk has to be about PSG against Lens. And not because PSG played so good. No, they did not play good at all. Lance kept it tight. They had a really hard, hard, hard time and it took a red card through Austrian defender Kevin Danzo. And admittedly, a really, really nice goal by uh, Messi, assisted by Neymar, to kind of steer it towards the title. So, uh, come the 75th minute, it seemed like uh, PSG, it's not very likely that they will not get the one point. And what did the ultras, who are still very unhappy, and I actually, to be honest, I actually understand also a little bit, because remember, I, and maybe you should go back to uh, the very beginning of, of the season when I was in uh, the whole hotel at the Black Sea coast, uh, when the Messi news broke, and I said, yeah, uh, it's really exciting to have this Mbappé Messi never ne it's, it's mouth watering. However, it's very likely this will end, end up in a train wreck. I'm glad that I had that thought because I remember from the Galacticos, it was an absolute train wreck back then. So, um, and the same thing happened here. So you had this big investment. Uh, it was all Champions League or bust. I mean, they were toying with league, uh, get, getting wins, but Messi had his worst season in a long time and also played not very often. Neymar, Every time you see him, you, you see the talent that he has at times, but he's never applying himself sufficient enough. So it's only Mbappé who held up the, uh, the, his end of the bargain in many ways and add to it a goalkeeping discussion. And then a shameful, absolutely shameful uh, performance in Madrid where uh, PSG then was ousted by the Galacticos, which kind of shows you, I mean, if Real Madrid... They, Real Madrid is in the semi-final, you could see the PSG, PSG bossed Real Madrid. So uh, the ultra still very unhappy, uh, also with the leadership. I think it also goes deeper, it's not only because of the players, it's all because PSG is becoming this modern club with uh, all about fashion and making loads of money instead of putting something on the field that is worthwhile and also, uh, the soul of the club is a little bit lost because, uh, you know, it's a Spanish-speaking club in the French capital. That doesn't... I mean, uh, how many true Parisians, in a way, are in there? Mbappé, I think Marquinhos probably has some credit. But overall, I think uh, I can definitely see how disillusioned they are. I mean, I even um, remember the protests for the New Jersey at the beginning of, of, of the season when they said, what you're wearing is not a PSG jersey. Give us back the one that you were la wearing last season. That's a PSG jer 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 jersey. So it's the overall development of the club, uh, El Khalifi, uh, Leonardo, everything there, the ultras want to have changed. So on what would be the night at PSG equal saint Etienne's record for the 10th French title, which is the most titles in France of any team. And most of this title, of course, came in the past 10 years, obviously. 
We, and, and, and it's a completely different story that uh, the record champion in France has only 10 titles, but that speaks of the, uh, about the volatility of the French league uh, over, over. But on the title that you win your first star, the ultras leave in the 75th minute, the, uh, the curva, I want to say, <laughs> and celebrate outside without the players. And the players, it's muted as a celebration. I mean, the game ends 1-1, one, one, actually, because Lance equalizes late on uh, with a man down, which, of course, would have angered many as well. And then it was uh, it was a little bit even um, shaky by a hole, uh, if, if they can hold on, but they did. So all fine there. But the players just, you know, uh, high-fiving each other, maybe weighing a little, a little bit on on the crowd, but I've never seen such muted celebrations for such a milestone. And then you hear all the fireworks going on off outside of the stadium, which I think added to the strange atmosphere. PSG is a real cluster mess, an absolute cluster mess that uh, I think a rethink needs to happen there, there, there as well because for all the talents that you have you don't have a team and I think Pochettino sh has to go let's put it that way Pochettino has to go he did not do uh, his part of the job I mean he's still living in a whole hotel he, he was never really into it in many ways um, so I think there needs to be also a rebuild of uh, United proportions in many ways which sounds so weird when you have this uh, absolute great front line so yeah uh the best game of the weekend though probably was the 5-3 of Nantes over Bordeaux uh that more or less sealed the fate of Bordeaux going going down which yeah I'm losing so many teams to Ligue 2 uh it's unbelievable uh the game Bordeaux had a 2-0 halftime lead uh, not pulled to 2-2, two, two, but in 68, uh, Bordeaux had a 3-3 three, three in the last 20, 20 minutes, not turns us around a 5-3 win. So yeah, uh, sad story there. So looking at the league uh, table at the moment, PSG are champions, uh, OM more or less in the Champions League. So uh, that we can also relatively safely say. Uh, it's not between Rennes and Monaco, uh, where Rennes do have the better goal dif the, the difference, but form at the moment speaks clearly for Monaco. I, 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 I gotta say, uh, interesting how little draws Rennes have, and that allows them to be up, up, up there where Monaco has a whole lot more draws. Uh, in many ways, uh, and Nice and Strasbourg, they kind of uh, round out the teams that could make it in into the Champions League. Nice also has the cup final against Nott. So uh, as an additional point where the winner then goes into uh, the Champions League. On the bottom, Mets, more or less down. Uh, Bordeaux, not lower than good, and Saint-Saint might just barely hang on. I actually think a Troyes, Clermont foot could still be dragged in. Lorient looking surprisingly good, although I really thought at the half way, way point of the season that Lorient might go all down. So maybe there's a chance for me to get a Lorient jersey and a little bit orange back there. So yeah, uh, next round, not that I can say much. Uh, if we have the Olympico between OM and OL, I think that's probably, probably the most in interesting one. Uh, let's just see the battle between Rennes and Monaco. Monaco play at Angers, uh, Rennes against saint at Etienne. So there's kind of it on the bottom a uh, few things going on. Um, the, and, you know, also every, every, everything is a little bit in the in, 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 in twine there. Uh, and I'm curious to see if Strasbourg can actually beat PSG because now what do PSG players have to play for? They all could go honestly into vacation already. Maybe they should. In any case, I was like a, a much longer video given that I barely saw anything from this these, these two leagues, but you know, many in interesting points to be made. Give me a thumbs up and if you enjoyed this video, please drop a line below if you have anything to add to what I want to say. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell, so in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day!